Okay, so when exactly should shock be diagnosed in an obstetric patient? And is this any different from a trauma patient? Well, to answer this question, which is very important, and actually the life of the patient depends on your answer, because the earlier you diagnose shock, the more time she has in order uh, for you to take the effective treatment and to save her life. Well, shock in the trauma patient, we have four phases. We have the warm shock here, and then we have the cold shock, and then we have the decompensated shock, and then we have the MODS, the multi-organ dysfunction phase. This is not the case in obstetric patient, because in obstetric patient, we actually have three phases, not four phases. We have the compensated phase, and then we have the decompensated phase, and then we have the MODS or the multi-organ dysfunction phase, and we explain this in the earlier parts of uh, the uh, lecture of shock and collapse. Well, when should you diagnose shock? Should you diagnose shock with high potential? And I'm sorry to say that many wait till high potential occurs in order to diagnose shock. Or should we diagnose shock a bit earlier with the rapid weak pulse or with the low blood pressure? Or should we diagnose it earlier with the tachycardia? and the pulse is still strong. Well, actually, all this is not right. You should diagnose shock once shock starts. And shock starts by the shock enlisting event. And then it progresses rapidly up to patient's death. So you don't have time to waste because the progression is rapid in obstetric patients. And that's what we said before, that presence of a shock enlisting event marks the start of shock. We are deceived because of the definition of shock, because the definition of shock remains to be deficient tissue perfusion. Actually, deficient tissue perfusion is not shock. Deficient tissue perfusion, you, have, you are in a phase of shock, which is the decompensated phase. You have a phase earlier, which is the compensated phase. And this phase, either the guidelines should take it out from the phases of shock in order to uh, for the definition of deficient tissue perfusion to apply or if they include it in shock then they have to change the definition and phrase it as shock state which is presence of a shock enlisting event at any stage in pregnancy up to six weeks after birth now this makes sense but to stick to the definition that shock is deficient tissue perfusion and do not include the compensated phase in the definition deceives obstetricians. So from now on, the diagnosis of shock when there is a shock listing event. And this, when we go to the clinical picture, will be very evident. Because in the compensated phase, early compensated phase, when the patient had lost up to one liter of blood, there will be no changes in the vital data. There will be no tachycardia, there will be no uh, reduced blood pressure, there is nothing, maybe some pallor. But the one thing that is always present is the shock enlisting event. So presence of the shock enlisting event marks the start of shock, although I have a normal blood pressure, I have a normal heart rate, a normal respiratory rate, a normal mental status, normal skin, the capillary field is normal, urine output is normal. All I have is a shock enlisting event. In the late compensated phase, there will be definitely pallor. Although pallor is not a mark of compensation. Pallor is simply the reduced hematocrit. Maybe it will be present here in the start of the uh, shock enlisting event because the patient is already anemic. And this deserves treatment. This deserves replacement even because of anemia because she's going into shock. Better to go into shock with good hematocrit and good hemoglobin percent. But in the late compensated phase, all you have is the tachycardia, the heart rate which is 100 to 120 beats per minute, and pallor, of course. And then you will go into a decompensation phase. This is when the patient loses 1,500 milliliters of blood or more. And here the systolic blood pressure may drop below 90, the heart rate will be above 120, the respiratory rate more than 20, the patient may be confused, the skin which was pale is now pale and cold, and the capillary field may be 5 seconds or more, and the urine output will be reduced. But still, she is producing urine because it's more than 20 
uh, milliliters per hour. And then you go into the MOTS, the multi-organ dysfunction phase. And here, the systolic blood pressure is below 80. The heart rate is 140 or more. The respiratory rate 30 beats per minute. And the conscious level is uh, affected. She may respond to voice or respond to pain in a later phase or maybe unconscious completely. And then the pale cold skin becomes pale cold and sweaty and the capillary fill is absent and the urine output is below 20 milliliters per hour. I am sorry to say many obstetricians wait till this phase before they diagnose shock. And this is a disaster actually because you should diagnose shock here with everything normal and all you have is a shock eliciting event. All lectures are based on Togaville textbook, your one-stop, postgraduate study source, and decision support platform. You have 14-day free full access trial. Follow the link in the description to start your trial. Remember to hit the subscribe button, and if you find this video useful, please like and share. And I want to remind you of two things that we said before. First, that this patient lost an enormous amount of blood. And you are deceived, you are in the deception phase. Most patients who survive are the patients that you start treatment here. And the patients you will start treatment in the early compensated phase are actually the patients who bleed in front of you when bleeding is revealed. So the solution to this deception is that whenever you have a shock enlisting event and still you have everything is normal, you treat the patient as if you are visualizing one liter of blood on the bed sheets and on the floor. Then patients will survive. Now we go to the next step in the diagnosis, which is the investigations. And the investigations, you always start with the CBC, which is very simple to do. You will see the hemoglobin percent, the hematocrit value, and the platelet count, and the white blood cell count. And all are important. You, your your estimation of blood loss can be through the hematocrit value. But as I said before, we always underestimate blood loss. And then we have the serum lactate, which is very important in shock because lactic acidemia marks a decompensation. So lactic acid between 0.5 to 1 millimoles per liter, this is normal lactic acid. If it rises above 1, this is lactic acidemia. The ABG is the one which will diagnose acidosis because in the ABG, I want best to remind you of the buffer system that the hydrogen ions, which are the acid, when they combine with the buffer, which is the bicarbonate, this reaction results in the production of water, which goes down with urine, and carbon dioxide, which goes out in breath. The ABG will show you acidosis because pH is the first thing in the ABG paper. And a pH is less than 7.35 marks acidosis, less than 2.7.25, this is severe acidosis. And then it will show you the PCO2, the pressure of uh, carbon dioxide, the pressure of oxygen, which is closely linked to saturation. We have to uh, explain which is which. The pressure is the pressure of the oxygen because it's a gas, so it bounces on the wall of the blood vessels. You can imagine it like this. So this creates pressure on the wall of the blood vessel. While saturation is the oxygen inside the RBC. I always think of it like this. The pressure is the people who are waiting in the bus stop. They may be crowded, so the pressure is high. There may be uh, just few of them here. So, sorry. There may be few people waiting at the bus stop like this. So the pressure is low. The saturation of the people inside the bus, inside the bus, they may be, bus may be saturated or it may be less saturated. The relation between saturation and pressure is evident. And the problem is that at a pressure of 60 millimeters mercury, you mean that the pressure dropped significantly. The saturation drops just a little bit. It will be about 90 only, if I can write it here. So at pressure 60, at pressure oxygen 60, the saturation is 90%. The pulse oximeter you put on the finger of the patient measures saturation. Normal saturation is 98%. When it's 90, you are in a disaster because this means that the pressure is 60 millimeters mercury or less 
which is actually cannot sustain perfusion or cannot deliver oxygen to tissues. So perfusion by oxygen is largely reduced. But at pressures, which the normal pressure is 100 millimeters mercury, it can drop to 80, it can drop to 70, and still you have time to work, time to act, it's not a disaster. But the saturation, if it drops from 98% to 90%, this is a problem, this is a problem. So be careful when you are measuring with pulse oximeter. Let's go back. Here in this ABG paper, you find that the oxygen pressure is 77.7. .7. We said that the normal is 100 millimeters mercury. The next is the bicarb. The bicarb here in this paper is 14.9 millimole per liter. The normal is 22, which means that there is reduced bicarbonate. Reduced bicarbonate. Base deficit is another thing. Base deficit is the amount of buffer needed to titrate back the pH to the normal value which is 7.35. The amount of buffer needed in this case is minus 11. So this is a negative, this is a base deficit. The base deficit in severe acidosis, severe metabolic acidosis, will be minus 10, minus 10. So this patient actually is in severe acidosis. Next, you will go to organ functions. And the organ functions, in order to diagnose organ dysfunction, we said this when we were talking about sepsis and severe sepsis, the difference between them, where the organ dysfunction. So here we do the same investigation. First, the coagulation profile. Platelet count less than 100,000 denotes thrombocytopenia. Actually, some books or some references would put it uh, 75,000. And this is not the case all the time because if the platelets progressively fall they are dropping like patient admitted and the platelets are 140,000 they became 120,000 then 100,000 progressive fall in the platelet count is from cytopenia so it's not just the mean count it's the count and the uh, uh, trend if it's falling or if it's rising and then the fibrinogen level, I need fibrinogen level more than 200. Less than 200 means hypofibrinogenemia. Less than 100 milligram percent means that the blood cannot form a fibrin clot. The normal in the pregnancy is 300 to 600 milligram percent. The PT, PTTINR should be normal, but if they are more than 1.5 the normal, then this denotes that we have a bleeding tendency. And here we will have a look at them because I need you to know this and I need every stone to be turned. Well, this is the uh, PT column. This is the PTT. The PT you need thromboplastin because the tissue factor will activate factor 7 which starts the extrinsic pathway. In the PTT we use partial thromboplastin and here we activate the intrinsic system. And then both of them will test the common pathway. So, let's say in the case of the IC, due to release of thromboplastin, PT is more valuable than PTT. And it will be prolonged before the activated partial thromboplastin time is prolonged. The INR is actually the ratio between the prothrombin time of the patient and the prothrombin time of control. So it's a ratio, it doesn't have a, it's not seconds or anything. I need all these tests to be within normal or even up to 1.5. And then we'll measure the fibrin degradation products. Fibrin degradation products are the result of degradation of fibrinogen or a soluble fibrin clot or an insoluble fibrin clot. And here the D dimers comes in play because D dimer is the product which is released when an insoluble clot is four, which is which means that there is activated factor 13. Activated factor 13 means this is the whole uh, steps up to the IC. But maybe in liver disease you will have fibrin degradation products increase because of the uh, breakdown of fibrin. We have normal values. The FDPs should be less than 10 micrograms per milliliter. If 10 to 20 micrograms, this is mild increase. If it's 20 to 40 micrograms, this is moderate increase. And if it's more than 40, this is a marked increase in the FDP. The D-dimer, the normal is less than 0.5 micrograms per milliliter. 
If it's more than 0.5 milligrams, this means that the D-dimer is elevated. And then we request liver function tests, kidney function tests, and the lung profile is important. We diagnose hypoxia and hypoxic respiratory failure if the uh, pressure of oxygen is below 60 millimeters mercury, while if the saturation is below 90 or equal to 90, we diagnose uh, hypoxia and hypoxemic respiratory failure. And of course, the main equation is between the pressure of oxygen and the fractional inspired oxygen. And this equation, the result should be 400 to 500. If it's below 300 or 200, this is again hypoxemic respiratory failure. Now you tested the organs and you tested and you did your blood tests. What do you expect in shock? Actually, in the compensated phase of shock, in this phase, you have nothing. So long the patient is compensated, all the investigations are normal, maybe some acidemia. But apart from this, everything is normal. In the decompensated phase, this is the phase you will find lactic acidemia and the lactic acid may rise above one. The investigations are abnormal. If you are looking for abnormal investigations, then you are waiting for the end organ dysfunction phase. The only thing in early shock you will look at is the hematocrit value and the hemoglobin percent. But in, in, in otherwise, if you are waiting for investigations to be abnormal, then you are waiting for the end organ uh, dysfunction phase. So take care that the investigations are normal in the shock compensated phase and decompensated phase apart from the mild lactic acid. Now we will move to part 5 of this lecture, which is the monitoring of the shock patient. And as you will see, monitoring of the shock patient does not need all that uh, sophisticated equipment or material. Maybe a pen and a paper and you have a stigma monitor and that's it.